So today I want to talk to you a little bit about how to color match with colored pencils because it can seem really overwhelming and really daunting when you first start thinking about trying to match exactly what you see in a reference picture and recreate it with colored pencils. Um, but there's really just a few simple tricks that I can teach you that will help you get there and help you be really accurate in your colors based on your original resource picture. So there are three important things to think about. Um, when you are trying to match a color, if you will identify and be able to describe the three basic color characteristics, you can match any color with really, really, really high, close, comparable accuracy. So the first thing I want you to do is always think about what is the local color or the hue. And for my class, you should know that that just means name the color that it looks like on the color wheel. So does it look more like it's um, a blue green or a green or a red orange? Just simply naming a color helps you have a starting point. The next thing is to think about the saturation and the intensity of color. How bright or how dull is it? And we know that by mixing complementary colors together, they will neutralize each other in the middle and create a neutral desaturated color. So in the real world, most colors are not pure, bright colors. They're pretty much all or almost all desaturated in some way. And then value is also really important, how light or how dark a color is. And with value in colored pencils, a lot of times I use the white colored pencil to not only lighten a color, but also sort of create a really nice burnished or polished and blended smooth look on the top of a color. And that lightens it but also blends everything together really nicely. So let's take a look at an example. If you were going to try to match this color, this is sort of a weird color. It's kind of a mauve purpley-ish wine kind of color. But if you just go through those three steps, it can help you identify and pick out which colors you should use. So the first thing I noticed with this color is the local color, I would consider that a red violet. Um, it's definitely not a pure red and it's definitely not a pure violet. It's sort of in between. Um, we kind of get this nice magenta-y red violet color, but this is obviously not anywhere close to that original color. So we're going to have to do something to it and mix in some more colors in order to get it to match. So the next thing that we're going to think about is the saturation. We need to definitely desaturate this color. So what we'll do is add in some of its complement. And in this case, the complement to red violet is yellow green sort of family right over there. So if we add in some yellows and greens into that color, it is going to dull it down, but it is also going to darken that color because anytime you're desaturating a color with its complement, it also darkens it darkening the value. Now in working with colored pencils, you can desaturate with the complementary color, but depending on the set of colors that you have, you can also desaturate it with some neutrals. So your colored pencil set has some really good grays and browns. Those are oftentimes a good thing to desaturate a color with as well, um, in addition to the complementary color. So for that, that just takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of experimentation to see exactly how you want to dull that color down. There's no exactly one right answer. It's simply test it out, see what works, and then you've got your solution. So if that's the desaturated version of that color, we now need to think about the value and the value needs to be lighter. So I always like to think about value on that value scale. If you think about everything on a scale of um, one being pure white and 10 being pure black, I would say this falls somewhere in like that five, six category. It's sort of in between those two values there. So anything that's on the upper part of that value scale, you want to add white to it. And this is where I would take that white colored pencil, 
after I've layered in all those other colors and really use that white to burnish and mix all of those colors together on your paper and sort of blur and smear them. But it's also going to lighten it at the same time and hopefully get it to a color that matches. So that's one example. Let's walk through one more really quickly. Let's say you have a color like this. I would say its local color is yellow, but it's definitely not a bright yellow. So we need to desaturate it with its complementary color. Now this is a great example where you could mix in a little bit of a tiny, tiny bit of violet, but yellow is such a light color on its own that it is very quickly overwhelmed with a really, really dark color like violet. So this is maybe a good example of where I would actually desaturate it with something like brown and or some grays to help dull it down. Um, sometimes that, a dark color like violet can just be a little bit overwhelming, but you could use it as long as you work really, really softly and don't lay down too much pigment. We still need to think about the value. And again, this is one where it's pretty light. So this time I would add a lot of white on top of that color to get it to match that original. Thinking about color mixing and color matching in those three basic steps can really help you narrow down and pinpoint a color. Working with colored pencils, it's really all about experimenting and trying stuff out. So let's take a look now at how I would do this in practice in working with colored pencils. Okay, so I want to show you um, some student examples of the color matching process. So here you can see the student had sort of a light um, blue-violet kind of color to match, a neutral gray, and this one really leans sort of towards a warm gray rather than a cool gray, and then a sort of a medium tone brown over here on this end. The student has experimented sort of off to the side um, to test out their colors, so I highly recommend test it out over here just to see if you can get the color right first before you fill it in on your worksheet. But to walk you through some of the things that they have done, I like to start when I'm mixing a color by picking the dominant color, that main local color, and laying down a really light, soft color layer first. And then you wanna think about if that color is desaturated. So if you need to add some of its complement or a neutral to it to help tone it down. So for that one, it is a little bit desaturated. I might would add a little bit of like a warm yellowy orange color to that, or sort of like a warm um, yellowish brown, kind of a neutral, just to desaturate it a little bit. And then I'd probably go in and add more of my blue violets over top of that with a little bit more pressure and keep building the pressure, working back and forth between those colors and eventually, I'd probably put in a layer of white to blend all of that and lighten it up enough to match this. For this gray color, um, it is fairly neutral. I do think it sort of leans a little bit into like the yellowish, warmish tones, yellow um, of a gray family. So I would probably start this with a neutral gray and then gradually build layers and add little bits of yellow and other soft neutrals, maybe some browns, to desaturate it, and then add some whites to it as well. For this brown color, I would say the undertones of this are really warm and it almost looks like an orange to me. So I would also, since this is a neutral, I would probably start with um, a light layer of my browns work in a light layer of orange, um, maybe even some like very subtle, very soft light reds, and then go back in with more of those neutral browns and keep building that value up and up and up, increasing the pencil pressure until I got to this color. I don't know that you would maybe have to add white to that one. I would just maybe eventually build up that color until it was full pencil pressure. Now, if you have a really dark color, for example, you can use black, but I always try to encourage students to use black as little as possible. 
because black is so dark and it is such a cool, cold, stark neutral. As soon as you start adding black to a color, it is really gonna take away a lot of the richness and the vibrancy of that color. So use black as little as possible, only where you absolutely need it. And I try to match all of my other colors just through using neutrals and complementary colors instead of adding in black. You wanna save that black for really, really important things where you need big value contrast jumps, like eyelashes, for example, or like the pupil of your eye. Another thing that I've sort of noticed will happen with colored pencils like Prismacolors is if you start building up the pressure of your wax too early and have a really, really heavy-handed, full-pressure color laid down, eventually you'll have so much wax that the paper can't accept any more and you'll be marking but nothing is rubbing off. In fact, it might actually even be scratching through your previous layers. So it is really important that as you're trying to color match that you are working with soft layers at the beginning and really making sure you're getting that color right and then gradually building the pencil pressure. You should never be using full pencil pressure until you know that that color tone is right it's got the right hue, it's got the right saturation, it's got the right value, and then that's when you wanna push it to that last step of building up that full pressure. Now, I have had students in the past and they've needed to remove some wax from their paper. So let's say that I've created this color swatch using those three colors and there's something wrong with it and I need to adjust it. Maybe I didn't desaturate it enough, maybe I needed to add some greens to it to dull it down, whatever the case may be. But the wax is so heavy that I can't seem to get any other color to rub off on it. So what you can do is if you have an X-Acto blade, um, a lot of times I actually like to take it out of the handle. You can, if you're very, very careful with the flat edge, not to cut yourself and also not to scratch the surface of your paper, you can lift up a layer of that wax on the surface and brush that dust off and then you can add another color back to it. That will let me go back in and add some more colors. Now, that is, of course, a last resort. That's not something you want to use as a trick all the time. Um, but if you, do have, if you do have a mess up and the color is completely off, that is a trick that you can do. So that is your quick tip for completing your color matching.